Hey guys, Brennan Mejia here, the Red Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Charge. One of my favorite roles ever. The story is bittersweet as all good things must come to an end as I recap the final few days filming Dino Charge. So join me as we go down memory lane. One of those things that's a little interesting versus other TV shows, we knew going in as cast members that we were only hired for two seasons because that's Power Rangers formula. They bring you in, you sign on for a season, then a super version of your season essentially, and then it's off, and then maybe you get to come back for a reunion episode. So at the time, it's like we knew in the beginning, it's like, oh, we're only on episode one or 10 or whatever. And as we got closer to that 40th mark, because uh, we did 44 episodes total, that it was truly going to be over. And time goes slow and fast at the same time. It's always weird how that, it's like such a construct of what you're feeling in the moment. Uh, but when Dino Charge, we were in the second season known as Dino Supercharge, and we really started getting down to those final days, those final episodes. We were packing up the house, cleaning everything, um, restoring the rental, you know, getting everything put back together, because uh, a lot of us lived together from the cast. Honestly, at the time, I was like, I was really ready to get back home, get back into my life. I thought I'd have a bunch of other acting jobs. I already had auditions lined up for like a bunch of Disney shows and things that I thought, would happen and like, oh, I have this credit as a lead. Um, but then I get back and I wasn't booking anything for a long time, which, you know, life just never goes the way you think it does, for better or for worse. But I thought I would leave this, take a break, then I'd be on set immediately. Wasn't what happened, but I know the energy everyone missed their families because we were living in a foreign country. At the time, my wife already left New Zealand because she came and moved with me. Uh, she went back a month early to help with our circus. Uh, and to find a place for us to live because we didn't have a, an apartment. So she left early, so I was by myself. And then on set, just the energy started changing where, you know, oh, this is the last time I'm filming in the Dino Bite Cafe. And then they start destroying it because they don't keep it. Um, and this is the last episode at this area. And then the ranger base gets destroyed, you know, in the season finales as the bases often get destroyed. But then they actually destroy it because they don't need it anymore. Um, but. You also don't film in order. So one of the final episodes we shot or scenes from it was actually one of the Halloween recap episodes where we were all on trial in space, um, basically for some crimes in against aliens or something. And so we got to redon our Halloween costumes and go on trial, which is fun. But the very, very last scene I filmed of Dino Supercharge, it was me holding my Dino Com with a, a fake stone wall behind me. But yeah, like honestly, when we were filming and finishing up those episodes, we didn't realize, or at least I didn't realize how much I would miss it after. You know, they say you, you never know what you have until it's gone. And that's kind of what it was because at the 44 episode mark, we were all kind of ready to go home. We're like, okay, we were good. Now let's go do other roles uh, aside from Rangers. But you know, life isn't that simple or that cut and dry often. So a lot of us were trying to just find work again and get back into the groove. And we had conventions starting up. Uh, our contract initially didn't allow us to do Comic Cons until I think it was like two years after we finished filming, something like that. Um, they weren't super strict with it, but we weren't able to just jump back into it. So it was like, Power Rangers, done. Now what do we do? And so having had work, you know, six days a week for eight months in a row, uh, you know, 12 to 15 hour days to all of a sudden, I'm just home with all this time and I don't know what to do. Um, you know, and then having to audition for other things, but you were so used to playing this one type of character at this one energy level. It took a lot of getting used to and just reconnecting to normal life uh it's just it's very odd because being on set as a guest star or something you know you work for a week and then you're back to normal life but when your normal life is the not normal life and then you're thrown back into normalcy it took me a good month i think to really reacclimate to not being on set every day and even now i still miss it you know i'm going to a convention actually tomorrow and it's not like every day I walk around and I look in the mirror and I'm like, Brennan, you're the Red Ranger. Ha <laughs> ha, it's gonna be a great day. Like, you don't do things. Well, maybe some people do that. I don't do that. Um, so unless I'm filming a video about Power Rangers or someone recognizes me randomly or I'm at a convention, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Um, and maybe some of that's some kind of mental defense mechanism because, you know, it, it was a great time. It's a great memory. It's always a part of my life, but it's not I don't want it to be the epitome of my life. Like it's not all my life is. Um, and different people connect to roles differently and they highlight it and they, they hang on to it at different levels. But for me, it's like 
when it gets brought up again, it's like, oh yeah, that was so great. And someone's like, I really loved in this episode when you did this or whatever. And I was like, oh yeah, I remember that now, but I don't, you know, constantly in my head wake up and be like, remember Brennan on episode three when this happened? You know, I, it's just not how I hang out because I'm always focusing on trying to get new roles because I have a family that I want to provide for. And so I got to like keep thinking forward, but it's always amazing to have the opportunity to reflect backwards because I'm only where I am because of what I did then. And so it's like, what can I do today to help me get to a point in the future where, you know, 10 years version in the future of me will be thankful that I did whatever I did today. But jumping back to the show, the energy definitely was different as we were wrapping on the those final few days, knowing this was the last scene I'd be with this person or at this location. And so it was bittersweet because like we're all going, almost time to go home and see family again. But then it's like, I'm also gonna be unemployed and not have a job anymore. So it's just wrestling with that. But despite all of the unknowns of filming Dino Supercharge and it coming to an end, some of the coolest parts that happens once we were in those final days was what the producer Chip Lynn did for us. He allowed us to keep 10 items from our wardrobe. Uh, so we all got to go through each other's wardrobes. <laughs> One of the items I wanted that I didn't get to keep, it's Davi's fault, our Gold Ranger. So, you know, he has like this golden cloak jacket that he wears as Sir Ivan. Uh, but there's actually an episode that Tyler, my character, wore the jacket first and then Ivan wore it and he wore it better. That was the episode where Gold Ranger was like better than Red Ranger at everything. But they made, or they found a jacket that fit me because Tyler actually started that look, but Shelby liked it better on Ivan. Tyler got jealous and I wanted to keep that gold jacket because I was like, oh, that's a cool wardrobe item. Um, they wouldn't let Davi have his character's original one for some reason, but they gave him the one that I wanted that my character actually wore. So the one he has at home is actually my wardrobe but they didn't let me have it for some reason. So I'm not bitter at all. I love you, Davi. Uh, yeah, other than that, I kept um, my red vest. I kept my boots. I kept a couple pairs of my jeans. Um, I kept my bracelet that Tyler wears that his dad gave him. Uh, I actually kept this jacket that looks like a, a red Letterman kind of jock looking jacket that Tyler never even wore, but it was one of the test options when they were figuring out his wardrobe. Um, and then I kept <laughs> like the pants that I wore in my Matador Halloween costume for some reason. I kept a vest I wore as a waiter in an episode where James uh, has like a food critic from New Zealand coming to the Dinobite Cafe. Um, and I was playing a French waiter for a second. Um, yeah, so just ridiculous things like that. Uh, and then I wanted my Energem and I told Chip multiple times I wanted my Energem, not so subtly. And then he invited us all over for a dinner and he let us keep our Energems, uh, which was super cool because I was just like, if I could have anything, I would love the inner gem. Because as a kid, I always loved gemstones. Um, I actually wanted to be a gemologist at one point, but uh, I think I just really liked shiny things. I didn't actually want to work as a gemologist. Overall, you know, it was just a lot of like happy tears. You know, you're, you're sad, but also excited and also really tired, but energetic because it was almost done, but you didn't want it to be done, but you did at the same time. Um, and then just knowing we had a 12 or 13 hour flight you know, to fly back home. And I remember I had an audition that I was learning my lines on that flight for when I landed and I didn't book it. Uh, and again, in my mind, I thought I'd be working immediately right after, um, but it was actually good to rest that I didn't have work immediately. Um, yeah, but Power Rangers, man, you know, one of the things I stopped wearing red a lot because, you know, after eight months of every day, you're wearing a red shirt and then you get home and then the, like one day randomly I'd have a red shirt on, not on purpose. Like I go through my wardrobe and I had like one or two red shirts at the time and everyone would be like, oh, you're the Red Ranger because like all my friends, I was like, you know, I, I, I own red things and it's okay if I wear them, right? Like it has nothing to do with being a Red Ranger. I just have red, I'm not gonna throw it away. So, and I also had a red car that got me a lot of, uh, flack for. Um, I wanted the gray one, but my wife wanted the red one. And again, people were like, oh, the Red Ranger is the red car. And I'm like, wasn't my idea, but yes, technically I do have the red car. So if you're thinking about the show chronologically, one of the last scenes is when all 10 of us basically go give a group hug and with Keeper before we go back to our normal time, you know, cause we went back in time to beat Sledge. Um, it wasn't truly the last scene we shot because you shoot out of order with shows, but the energy of knowing that we're shooting the end of the show right now and we're almost done. It was very easy to really tap into that energy because like we're all saying goodbye to each other, but we're actually really all saying goodbye to each other uh, because we actually were gonna fly back and 
you know, a lot of us don't live next to each other. James, our Black Ranger, actually lives in New Zealand and wouldn't see him again for a long time. Same with Jared, our Graphite Ranger. Wouldn't see Ryan anymore, because again, or not anymore, but for years in between. You know, Dobby lived in New York and uh, Yoshi was living in LA and I'm an hour and a half from LA. And basically people assume we all just stay in touch forever and get to see each other all the time. And it's like, we don't. You know, as much as I'd love to see everyone every weekend or something for food, life gets busy, you know, you start families, people have kids, um, you know, our careers take us to different parts of the globe. So I always love and enjoy getting to catch up with my cast members. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as often as I would like it to be, but you know, again, those memories are what keep you going. So when you see each other, it's like you never missed a beat. You know, when I see Yoshi again or James, it's like a day hadn't even passed and we're just like, hey, back to right where we were, just catching up and hanging out again. Although my time on Power Rangers Dino Charge came to an end, I did get to come back to the Power Rangers franchise a few years later. So if you wanna see me break that down, watch here.